dear friends this video would explain you the concept of transcritical refrigeration cycle uh, to understand what is transcritical refrigeration cycle uh, we need to have a look at the pressure enthalpy diagram so we are familiar with the pressure enthalpy diagram this is the vapor dome this is the vapor dome and you all know that below the vapor dome the region is called as subcritical region the reason is uh, the peak uh, the top of the vapor dome is referred to as a critical point and below the critical point we would have the region wherein the refrigerant boils okay so for example the refrigerant is dry satur is saturated liquid over here as it is heated the refrigerant boils and it becomes dry saturated gas okay so this is what we have learned earlier but beyond this critical point what happens is uh, this two distinct region that is liquid and gas region they disappear and what is left is a supercritical region now if this is clear to us that below the critical point it is subcritical region where the phenomena of boiling or evaporation is distinct and above the critical point there is no boiling phenomena okay then the transcritical refrigeration cycle will be clear to us right uh, now let us understand what is the transcritical refrigeration cycle by referring to a commonly used refrigerant in the transcritical cycle which is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide or as you know it is also known as r744 it is a natural refrigerant and the interest in the transcritical cycle is because of the use of carbon dioxide in the transcritical refrigeration uh, we all know that the commonly used refrigerants are hydrocarbons or hydrocarbon derivatives hcfcs are nowadays used and all this uh, hydrocarbons or hydrofluorocarbons chlorofluorocarbons hcfcs all they have a speciality that their critical point is high Uh, the critical point being high is a desirable feature because if you have a high critical point then you know that when you are designing a condenser suppose the critical point is high and this is the condensation line suppose this is your condensation line then and if the critical point is high the condensation line is far separated from the critical point and because of that the refrigerating effect which you get is good enough okay because you know that the cycle is like this this is the cycle which i am be drawing this cycle you all know is the subcritical cycle why it is subcritical cycle because the refrigerant is condensing below the critical point okay the entire cycle the vapor compression refrigeration cycle is operating in the region below the critical point so it is a subcritical cycle now what is transcritical cycle in this case Uh, if you are referring to carbon dioxide specifically carbon dioxide has a problem that it is not an ideal refrigerant with respect to the property of critical point as i said the desirable property for a good refrigerant is that the critical point has to be high but for carbon dioxide you see that the critical point is pretty low it is around 31 degree centigrade 31 degree centigrade is the critical point and the critical pressure is around 74 bar right and you know that the condensation point happens at around 30 35 degree centigrade okay so when you have such a higher ambient temperatures then we cannot expect to design a refrigeration system with co2 uh, in the subcritical region right so for that and if you want especially a higher cop so for that we need to look at a cycle which is a transcritical cycle now transcritical means it would operate both in the subcritical region as well as in the supercritical region by supercritical i mean in the region above the critical point so transcritical cycle is the one which operates beyond uh, the uh, it operates in both the regions that is for example if you refer to the ph diagram of this cycle you will find that partially the cycle is below the critical point it is below the critical point here this is a critical point and this region this region is below the critical point and above this is above the critical point so that way it transits the boundary okay of the subcritical and supercritical so it is called as 
transcritical cycle why it is called as transcritical cycle because it transits the or it passes the region beyond the subcritical okay so this is a transcritical cycle and its representation is now very simple what happens in the transcritical cycle is the evaporation phenomena which is commonly uh, common phenomena in all the vapor compression refrigeration cycles it happens in the subcritical region okay so this is the evaporation phenomena where the refrigerant gets evaporated okay and it is slightly superheated there is superheating this is suction superheating now the refrigerant gets superheated and then it enters the condenser this is similar to what you have, uh, it enters the compressor sorry uh, this is similar to your vapor compression refrigeration cycle where the refrigerant is boiled in the evaporator and it after evaporation it enters the compressor so here also the refrigerant is evaporated in the evaporator and it enters the compressor now what now what is the difference the difference is in the subcritical cycles the pressure the discharge pressure or the pressure after the compressor is below the critical point okay uh, in this transcritical cycle the pressure after compression which is known as the discharge pressure this pressure this discharge pressure is above the critical point above critical pressure so this is above critical pressure right this way and hence this discharge temperature is also much above the critical temperature discharge temperature is also much above the critical temperature okay so this way this cycle differs from the subcritical cycle after that because now you are dealing with the refrigerant which is beyond critical point there won't be any phase change so there is no phase change so there is no condensation there is no condensation unlike in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle operating in the subcritical region in the subcritical region you will find that the vapor condenses after compression here the vapor uh, here the refrigerant would actually cool and not condense it would cool in the gas cooler so there is a gas cooler and it will cool in the gas cooler and reach a state 3 right and afterwards or 3 dash okay if there is a, a, a heat exchanger uh, pro, uh, provided that is uh, the region would uh, uh, it will go to a further a lower temperature which is 3 dash and then there is an expansion so then there is an expansion okay so this is how the transcritical cycle looks so you see that the expansion is in the supercritical region okay the compression also partial is in the supercritical region the cooling is totally in the uh, supercritical region okay so the supercritical region there is the cooling unlike in the transcritical unlike in the subcritical cycle where there is a condensation so the difference is there is no condensation number 1 number 2 there is gas cooling right and the gas cooling happens beyond the critical point right uh, another difference is there is compression but the compression is beyond the uh beyond the critical point the pressure is beyond the critical pressure so that explains what is known as the transcritical cycle i also represented the transcritical cycle on the temperature entropy diagram you would find that 4 to 1 is the evaporation there is suction superheating from 1 to 1 dash then there is a compression from 1 dash to 2 and then there is a cooling at constant pressure there is a cooling gas cooling at constant pressure and then there is expansion there is expansion you will find that this cycle operates in the subcritical region as also in the supercritical region hence it is a transcritical cycle in the next video i would explain you how do you analyze such kind of cycle thank you